Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we are going to get on video number three here. We're going to get some paint laid down. I'll show you some mixing of the color and all that good stuff. So in my video one, I showed you some items we needed. The only thing I left out was my hardener. I didn't put that in the video, but that's okay. You'll see us using it here. Uh, that hardener is item number 1003E. That is enamel hardener from MCW. Uh, like I say, this stuff works well. You don't have to use it. It's not a necessity, uh, but it does help. So uh, this car, once it was painted, I set it in my the dehydrator, a.k.a. Susie Bay Govan. Let's go that route. Um, and I didn't even turn it on. I just set it in there to keep the dust off in it. And day two, come out here, checked it out. I came out here before I went to work, and you can hang on to it, hold it, handle it, whatever. It's, it's very dry. I could probably wet sand it and hit it again if I wanted to, so... Other than that, um, yeah, let's get started on it and uh, let's see how this thing takes uh, takes the paint. So first off, where you're using a um, Iowata airbrush, uh, this is kind of my to go to for body color. Uh, the .0 I usually use for more or less like my lacquers, uh, interior stuff like that. So before you start, you know you always want to make sure these are clean. Um, I try to clean them good before I put them away um, basically want to make sure that needles nice and clean and you know it's clean in here the cups clean and also I like to make sure the needles seated before we start so just make sure it's nicely seated you don't have to kill it just crank it down a little bit and you should be good to go so all airbrushes are different um, depending on how far you want that needle to go back uh, I don't go all the way back with mine. Um, like I said, it all depends on where you want. Once again, I got one of these quick disconnects in here. Uh, that's just the way to go. So, being that said, uh, we're still going to run 18 PSI. Um, so that's what we're running in it. And that's where we're going to start. So mixing paint. Once again, we're going to start with one of our cups. And I had that same cup that we used for thinner. And we're going to use our MCW hardener. So the hardener I like to put in these jars uh, just because it will um, have had it to where you can't get the jar open it welds it shut. So this is a bottle of new hardener here. So this is a 1003E enamel hardener. So once this starts getting a little low I'll end up just dumping this into there and all is good. So I like to say these are nicer because I can get these caps off no problem and we're good to go. So like say my airbrush, uh, the Iowata has a little bit bigger cup. Um, so we're going to put about 7.5 milliliters of paint. Uh, that should be enough to do the whole car. So we're going to mix that up. So I'll start my thinner. Let's say you can dump this in, but I see every time I dump it in, I'm, now I'm way, way too much. Now we're going to use our Hugger Orange. This is 6900E. So even though I've shaken this really good, I still like to take and stir it. So I usually just use the back of a paintbrush, something handy, and just stir it up real good just to make sure we're good. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. Like I say, these are 3.0 milliliter pipettes. And we're going to take it to the 7.5. That should give us plenty of paint to do the job here. So this one's going to require a little bit more because we have to paint the front bumper. So here you can see we are at 7.5 on equal cups. So we're going to take and just dump that in and we'll get it mixed. So once again we can save that cup for another day. And we're just going to work this back and forth. There should be plenty of paint to do the job. Might be a little more than we need. But that's all right. I'd rather just do it this way and have enough versus having to come back and remix some more. So give that a good stir back and forth. Okay, so now we're going to add our hardener. So we'll take another pipe it. So with this amount, we're going to add 3.0 milliliters of hardener. So we're right at the 3.0 mark. Like that. And we're going to throw this away. Because you don't want that to get mixed up with some 
another paint project that'll ruin your day. So once you mix the hardener in this, you got about a four hour window um, to get painting. So if whatever I don't use on this, this will get dumped out. That's just how it's that's just how it goes. So I like I always do, I like to test the side, make sure we're not too thick, not too thin. I want it just barely transparent. See how it's a little bit transparent? So it's about perfect right there. At times, depending on how the color is turning out, um, I'll actually take and put a little more thinner in it. Sometimes uh, 0 0.5 or 0.7 milliliters extra of thinner towards the last coat, and that helps smooth it out. So now that the paint set a little bit, um, we got about a half a jar left actually in there, it looks like. So that's not bad. All right, we'll take her over to the paint booth and we'll get spraying her up. All right, so like I say, I always like to start with a test spoon uh, just to make sure things are spraying properly. And that orange covers amazingly nice. Give her a couple hits here. Looking good, looking good. And we'll move on. So we're going to start with the spoiler first. Kind of just start with a small piece to see how it's going to go. And like I say, just like the primer, um, we're not going to try to paint it right off the get-go. We're just going to give it a light coat. Nothing too extravagant, just enough to color it orange. Give it a little hit round and round. Like I said, I always like to do the hard spots first. Uh, that way you're not, once you give it kind of a heavy coat on the flat surface, um, and you have to go back to that bottom spot, you're not overbearing it, and then that's how you end up with a run. This MCW is pretty good paint. You can lay it on actually pretty heavy um, before you will get a run out of it. I know they're lacquers. You can really douse it on with that. I mean, you can run a, a .5 needle in that and just kill it. So we're giving this multiple light coats. I may look like on the video we're putting a lot on, but it's actually just a lot of light, light coats. Okay, next we're gonna start with the nose piece. This is one thing I like about dual action. You can actually kind of blow the parts off before you start, um, just to make sure there's no dust on them. So once again, I start everything on the insides, uh, bottom pieces, all the kind of hard to get to areas before I lay it down onto the more solid parts. Kind of get inside that grill a little bit just to make sure we got that covered. Some of those places are kind of hard to fill in. And once you get a lot of those little tight areas filled in, um, Then we can go through and just give it an overall kind of a little bit of a heavier coat. All right, we're going to start on that hood. Like I say, once again, we'll hit it with a little air with that dual action airbrush. And we start our sides. And you'll notice where I put that panel line on there, how that'll work really nice. So I'll start at the bottom. We're going to fill this in because a lot of that's going to get black. So I'm not getting too carried away on the bottom, just kind of just filling it in. I'm not going all out and trying to completely cover it. And now we'll get the surface going. Like I say, watch how that panel line will just stay black. So it actually works really good. Once again, like I was saying, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I usually do that before um, I do my wet sand. And that way I'm not taking it down too far. So even once you're done painting, uh, everything's all good to go. And you want to panel line it one more time. That'll just leave it a nice, rich black um openings through there. I almost did black primer on this, but 
Uh, I don't think it would have covered. Orange over black is not usually a good idea. Um, I probably could have even used the white or pink primer on this. Would have been sufficient. But I wanted to give it a little more of a darker hue. So that's why I went with the gray. And now on to the body. So everything gets a couple coats. Uh, so I do a little flash time. So the first three pieces I painted, uh, those are sitting off to the side. And I will bring those back after I get the body done. So after the body's done, um, like I said, that's about enough time to leave them sit and flash. So once again, same thing here. I like to just start with the um, hard to get places and I'll hit them pretty good. Like I said, I'm not trying to paint the car, just, just basically um, going through some of the odd corners and edges and inside the wheel wells. Places that a lot of guys will sometimes forget. So I like to do the door jams first sometimes just to make sure that the paint settles in there and gives a little bit of a dry time. Anywhere that's got some odd edges or surfaces. So once again, we'll go all the way through, do this all the way around it, around the windows, up underneath the glass, uh, everywhere like that, under the hood, and then we'll go through and do a final, you know, one time across. Okay, now we got most of that edges filled in, so now we're going to start doing the overall. So how I do these guys, I just, I take my time, real slow passes, and I do very, very minimal overlap. Like I say, I, I'm different, I, I paint them slow, slow and easy. Like I say, just a light coat, not trying to paint it right out the get-go. We're still running the 18 PSI air pressure. And I walk this all the way around without stopping. So what I found, especially if you're using a lot of hardener, if you go part way and you stop, and then you come back the other way, you're going to get that mist. So you don't ever want that, um, that mist of paint to hit fresh paint because you'll get a flat spot or a dull spot. Especially if you're not planning on clearing it, uh, rubbing out or anything, you'll get kind of a haze in the middle of the paintwork. So as you can see here, I just continuously work my way across. And I'm probably good 20-25 minutes all said and done painting a body on these. Like I say, just take my time and just slowly walk it across. So once I get to the trunk and the roof area, I'll just basically do those um, without going across the front just to save paint. And once I get to the edge of that door, I'll start bringing that all the way from front to back. Just so I make sure I get down the A pillar and across the top of that front fender. Okay, so I walked it all the way around. I was kind of hard to see. I kind of cut that short because I had my hand right up in the camera because I'm not watching the camera at this point. I'm watching what I'm doing. So now at this point, uh, obviously you can't see, um, but I'm hitting the front end again around those some of those hard to get spaces. And I'm basically going to give it another quick shot around. So even though right now it's looking pretty good, it's still kind of transparent in spots. So you can see a little light spot on the trunk there. So like I say, we're giving it just a couple shots across here on the bottom. Then one more across the back. All right, so now we're going to let that body flash out for a little bit. And now it's been about a good 15 minutes or so. Uh, so we're going to bring these parts back in. Well, maybe t it's been probably about 10 minutes, I'm going to say. So we're going to bring these parts in, and these are going to get their final shots. So this... This painted pretty good, like I say, I usually do is I'll add a little bit extra thinner in the end um, if I see necessary, but this actually laid down pretty nice, so I didn't bother with it this time around. That works pretty good most of the time. Uh, the only time you got to really be careful is if you're using a lot of metallics, because what you'll do is you'll activate the paint that's already kind of curing on the bottom, and you'll let the metallic will start sagging off the sharp corners and... Uh, door jams and next thing you know it'll be just like you know the paint will be completely moved out of there 
So that's the only thing if you're going to add a little extra to thin it in the end to smooth it out. Uh, you just got to be careful of that. A solid color, uh, not so much, but uh, metallics, definitely. Okay, so bringing that nose piece back in, uh, just like before, I'm going to work in those tight spots first. Pieces on the back. Some of the odd pieces in the front, inside that nose cone. After we get that good enough, then we're going to go through and just give it the overall after that. Now this will get quite a few shots, just like the spoiler did. And these will be their last, last time out here. These will go into the Susie Bake Oven and they'll set there for the rest of the night. That's looking pretty good. Okay, we're bringing that hood in for one last hit. Get our sides on first. I'll shoot the bottom just a little bit after this. And then we'll roll across that top one more time. Okay, as you notice that panel line is still standing out pretty good so that works pretty good kind of doing the panel line before you paint um, it doesn't work on every color is good I mean obviously if you're dark blue and obviously black um, but if you're like especially white um, you know and you do that on a white primer and then paint the car white man that really looks sharp that sticks out really well or unless you're going to do a black primer same difference so we'll give the hood Good few shots, and like I say, it's the same as the rest of it, uh, just multiple light layers. And I always change direction every time I do a different pass. So this time I went from the front, just to make sure I got paint up inside the hood scoops. So basically side to side, from one side to the other, and then back across, and that's usually pretty good. And we'll call the hood done after that. Yeah, it looks pretty sharp. Okay, we'll bring that body in for one more hit. Like I say, it looks pretty good. You can still see a little transparent. So once again, we're going to work through our odd spots down in the crevices of everything along those rocker panels. And before I get too far, uh, I'm going to hit that trunk one more time, kind of in the back. Make sure I get all my odd spots down below. My tape's still holding out pretty good, so that's a plus. Like I say, if you guys are using a method like this, just make sure it's pretty secure. I've had them fall before, and I thought, yeah, purple pond, here we go. So I like doing this versus sometimes the little Tamiya stand, because uh, the paint booth I have is not that tall. So if you have the stand in your hand, uh, and you're rotating it around, because I like to hold it in my hand versus just holding it down, um, sometimes I feel like I just don't have enough room, so that's why I like to use this method. So we get a little bit out in that trunk, and then we're going to go through and hit the body. I'll give it that overall again. So this is going to be just a one good heavy overall time pass. Um, main reason I wanted to make sure I had enough paint out to last. So here's another thing, guys, why I do not put a cap on the top of my airbrush. So when I'm painting this, uh, like I mentioned before, I don't stop in the middle. So I'll look in my airbrush and see, okay, I got enough paint. I can go all the way across, like from front, like side to side. So that's the reason. So that way I can see how much paint I have. So if I obviously have the cap off in it and I'm spraying, if I get like halfway across that roof line and I, I run out, time I go mix some more, and then start again where I left off, you're going to have a, a haze line right there. So that's my big reason I do not leave the, or I do not put a cap on, just for that reason right there. 
I know there's times you probably be all right without doing that, but just like I say, guys, it's just the way I do it. I'm slow at it, and I take my time, and um, like I say, usually the results are pretty good. So like I say, I've got to learn this MCW paint very well. Um, like I say, when I first started using it, uh, I had to admit I was not impressed. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to keep trying it. I'll have to keep trying different things. And this is what I found that's worked really well for me. So once I roll this around all the way down, the kind of my hand goes in the way. So I'm just going to cut it short here and bring you back in once I get around the corner here. I really wasn't paying attention um, at this point I know my cup's starting to run a low so I'm trying to gauge my speed across the body uh, with the airbrush and looking at that cup and make sure I got enough to finish the job uh, which in this case I did I probably almost would have wanted to go one more time around um, starting from this side and bringing it back but I knew I didn't have enough without mixing more so I knew the orange would take a little bit more to cover on top of that gray. Okay, where I rolled around just a little bit, I'm just hitting the bottom a little bit on the bottom. Uh, trying not to go up that body any. And that looks pretty sharp. Give it a kind of final look over and make sure everything looks good and covered. And she'll go to the oven. All right, so that's how much paint we ended up with left right there. Um, not enough to go back around, um, but just I end up just dumping it because, like I say, once you get the hardener in it, she's pretty much done. Okay, so then that just give me a quick, uh, just a real. I'll show you how fast these are to clean the color out of these. Uh, once again, I'm using my unicorn tears because I'm out of airbrush cleaner, um, so I'm using my leveling thinner and I got that paintbrush I just leave in my paint booth and just work that around a little bit once I get that going I'll dump that out nothing big so I'll dump that thinner add a little bit more and I do this process about three times Same thing, use the, air or the toothbrush again. Toothbrush. The paintbrush. I guess it could be a toothbrush if you want to be aggressive with it. I always go inside the tip and then I'll push that in and then hit the air. Um, and then I'll kind of back feed the back up into the needle and I'll clean that needle if you don't plan on tearing it apart. I hang on to it. There we go. Then once more, I'll clean it again. Then before I hang it up, I'll put my about three drops in it. And I just leave it sitting with the cap on it. And that's that's final. That's how we'll leave it, just like that. Alright guys, we're going to come over to the Susie Bake Oven and see how we're doing. Like I say, I have not turned this on. Uh, I usually don't. After a paint job, I'll leave that sit. Because that is the idea of leveling thinner, is to let it smooth itself out and level itself. So here's my fancy little vise I got here. So I'm not going to slide the drawer out because that vise is too heavy. So I'll just give you kind of a quick look. This has been sitting in here probably an hour at this point. So it looks pretty good. And you can still see those black panel lines just a little bit in the door and in the trunk. So it's pretty good. So I'll set this down and we'll take a look at the real quick so the hood painted out really nice like so you can see that panel line in the back that's pretty sharp same as the bumper and that spoiler it painted up pretty good so 
So at this point, this has probably been about an hour that this has been sitting here. So it's she's just starting to tack up nice. Uh, it's probably the bottom of it's pretty good, but obviously I'm not gonna start handling it or nothing. So so it turned out pretty good. So we're gonna leave this sit this uh, leave this in here overnight. Uh, like I say, because I don't want to turn that fan on if it's just a little tacky and have it draw on any dust in the room. So like I say, for the night, we're just going to leave it in here. Because it's getting late, as usual. And next couple days or so, we'll start baking it. Uh, and like I say, once I turn this on, we'll cook it at about 122 degrees. And it'll cook in there for about a good 10 to 20 hours, depending how I feel. Um, and after about 20 hours worth of cook time, she's hard as a rock and we'll go wet sanding. Alright guys, this is the next day. 24 hours has been sitting in here. This has not been turned on. So let's see what we got here. This is too heavy to just pull up here. So I'm going to pull the parts out here. Yeah, those look nice. Oh, I'm trying to grab that looking through the camera. That was pretty good. You can see that black panel line in there. A little bit on those hood scoops. So that turns out pretty nice when you pray when you do a little pre pan line, I should say. And let's see, let's check out the spoiler. That looks pretty good. So we'll have to touch that bottom up. Not a big deal. And that nose piece turned out really sharp. Mm -hmm. So we'll take it over. We'll take a little closer look at the body work. All right, guys, that turned out pretty nice. And that was in there um, about 24 hours, not quite. And this is I have not turned out dehydrated, so the hardener is well worth the deal. Uh, so that is, I mean, I wouldn't be afraid to build this model right now. It's pretty good dry to touch. Um, in hindsight, I probably would have maybe give it one more coat. Um, but I would have had to mix a little more orange. Um, I did dump some out. But all in all, it turned out pretty good. So yeah, so there we have it. Alright guys, uh, that's going to wrap it up for video number three. Uh, maybe ran a little longer than I think, I'm not sure. So uh, I went over top of the gray primer. And being it's orange, uh, I could have put pink down. I have pink primer here. Uh, this is the Mr. Color Finishing. And this works really nice. Or I also have Mr. Hobby, uh, Mr. Color White. I almost thought about, I should have did white, but that would have given me more of a real bright orange. Um, I was looking for more of the kind of the more darker orange, um, maybe even more of a reddish orange. Uh, but this looks pretty good. I may give it another coat yet. I'm not sure. It's like say it's hard as a rock. It's ready to go. I don't know. I just I sometimes look at it. And I almost think it has a gray hue to it. You know what I'm saying? Because reality, I probably would have went another couple shots across it just to give it that nice. But it looks good. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, we could run with it the way it is. But I don't know. Just deep down, I keep thinking, man, I should just wet sand that real quick and just give it a real quick couple shots and color good. So if I did do that... Um, That'd be up on the next video here on video four if I did decide to do that. And uh, to do that, it wouldn't take nothing for paint. So as of, this, as of this moment, we used exactly a half a jar. So that's where we are on the jar of paint. As you can see the line there. So, and that was painting everything pretty decent. So it wouldn't take maybe a quarter of that. And we could shoot that one more time, give it a nice wet sand. And man, that thing would come out like, yeah, like super yes you know i don't know I'm, I'm thinking about it so it looks good now but i don't know we'll see so with that guys i appreciate you guys tuning in the channel and checking everything out so uh that's gonna wrap it up for this and uh hey we will see you guys on the next video uh yeah you guys have a good one